Uh, welcome back to the Sunday show. Molly Jong Fast, Brian Kloss, Miles Taylor are back with me. I want to pick up on one of the things you were talking about, Molly, was the fact that um, the way the press is covering the 2024 campaign, they're not paying as much attention as they should be on what Trump is up to. But, you know, M Miles, one of the stories that has been reported and then just sort of disappeared it, and the president brought it up in his Arizona speech, and that is this whole Schedule F business that apparently Donald Trump put in place before he left the White House. Talk about how that Schedule F, um, what that is, and how why that is so dangerous if he is reelected. Well, John, towards the end of the Trump administration, there was a concerted effort among lawyers to figure out if they could purge the so-called deep state. And what they wanted to do was be able to fire federal employees in mass, civil servants, non-politically appointed people, so that they could gut them and replace them with individuals who were more favorable towards Donald Trump and the MAGA movement. Now, of course, he was not re-elected president, but the tool they were going to use was called Schedule F. Now, what I can tell you, Jonathan, after having talked to dozens of ex-Trump administration officials on this subject, is right now they're putting together a systematic plan to be able to do this in a second Donald Trump administration and to do it even bigger than they had planned at the end of the first term, which is to go and purge federal, federal agencies, especially the science agencies, key national security agencies, agencies tied to law enforcement, where Donald Trump viewed opposition that potentially would stand in his way from implementing his agenda, that anti-constitutionalist agenda. So this is something that's being, uh, again, put together as we speak. It's a huge concern. And one other concern I have, Jonathan, after talking to so many of my fellow former colleagues from the administration, is that they're trying to look at powers they didn't utilize previously for a second Trump administration. And one of those that I cited in my book, Blowback, was something called the PADS, the Presidential Emergency Act and Documents, or the Doomsday Book. There are extraordinary presidential powers that the American public does not know about that Donald Trump and his team are intent on using in a second term because they know those powers will help them get over democracy's guardrails and, again, implement an agenda that's contrary to the Constitution. That's how serious this has become. So, Brian, this, given what Miles just said, this conversation has taken a terrifying turn. Um, I did not know about that, the presidential doomsday book. Um, I mean, even without that, this whole Schedule F business, um, talk about why that, is so, why that is so dangerous between that and the presidential uh, doomsday book, why these two things that Miles just talked about is so dangerous in the hands of a president who has promised retribution if reelected. Well, the idea of the Constitution is not something that's set in stone. It is something that is upheld by people. And so if an individual is able to co-opt individuals who work in the government and use the levers of power, they can violate the Constitution. And we, we see that around the world when democracy dies. And I think the most extraordinary thing about this moment is that Trump is not pretending. He's not hiding. He is telling us this is what he's going to do. And at the same time, he's telling his rallies, you know, we should celebrate violence. So you have an authoritarian figure who is facing 91 felony charges, who has been found liable for sexual abuse, and has, you know, basically telegraphed that he's going to use the full power of the government to go after his enemies on, you know, baseless charges. And that person is being covered as though they are of a similar level of problem as a mainstream Democratic official who is 80 years old when Trump is 77 years old. And this is the problem with, with the narratives that have been constructed around this, is that we have one story in this country. The story is that a dangerous authoritarian who is facing massive felony charges is about on the cusp to retain power and to use that power against his enemies to erode democracy. That's 2024. And that is the story that should be on every newspaper, in every press outlet, until the election. Because it's the most important thing. And we can't chase novelties like Joe Biden's dog biting someone or Trump, you know, Biden almost falling over. This is absurd. I mean, this is a, a total failure of magnitude bias. Don't chase the shiny objects. 
focus on the important story, and that is the job we have until November of 2024. Um, and Molly, you're going to be with us um, um, in the in the next block. So I'm going to pick up this conversation with you on the other side. But Brian Kloss, Miles Taylor, thank you both very much for coming to the Sunday showing and having this conversation.